Uh, well, we're sitting here with Chris Potter, who played Gambit on the 90s X-Men animated series. Thank you for sitting and chatting with us. Well, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, we're huge fans of the show. Um, we had listened to the panel yesterday, and we were you were talking about how um, uh, one of our friends was actually asking to see how you developed this, this accent for Gambit because it's such an iconic voice for him. You do, we don't see many other Gambit iterations or anything like that. Obviously, there was only the one on uh, Wolverine Origins, but that wasn't like a highly remembered one, so you are the voice. How did you kind of come up with that? Well, that was just it. There was no competition, so no one else tried out. Um, it was an extensive training program I had to go through, diet, working out, developing the voice, and then I went in and found out no one else auditioned, so you get it. <laughs> I, well, no, seriously, what I did was, um, you know, I, I knew a little bit about the Cajun Patois, and I thought, well, how do I develop this voice quickly? We really didn't know what they were looking for because uh, the, the, the show was called The X Project when they presented it mm -hmm. to us and were casting way back when. So I knew that uh, as... It, as born in, uh, born Canadian and being surrounded by French Canadian, that a big part portion of the Cajun patois involved French. Um, so I took a little bit of the Canadian French slang and a little bit of that Southern Louisiana uh, Deep South uh, dialect and blended the two, gave it a whirl, and basically was pretty much insecure about what I'd put together the entire time I did the series, but uh, I'm finding out that it, that, it, that it had it resonated with some people. It definitely did. It definitely did. And you were talking about how uh, you obviously some of these guys were already voice actors and you <laughs> hadn't really done voice acting before this one. So you were kind of intimidated. Like, how, how was that dealing with that? Uh, well, not only was it intimidating, it was um, they were in my head because they, they knew that too. So uh, when we started doing the animated sessions, we were all in one room until the, we realized that there was some spill happening between the mics. So we became, we, then we began to do the voices individually in our individual sessions. So when we did them as a group, of course, you're subject to these guys and all of, and girls and all of their chiding. And um, as I said, I, I was already insecure enough about the voice. Well, there were a couple guys in particular. Norm Spencer was one hilarious guy. But I'd, I'd finish a line, and then we'd say, cut, and then he'd look at me and say, are, are you going to do it like that? Which was all I needed as a fragile performer. Yeah. <laughs> so Thanks very much, Cyclops, for doing that as the leader of the team. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, then they could all do imitations of people. And one day they needed a, a Jack Nicholson impersonator, and... Of course, Norm right away wanted the extra money, so he volunteered, did his, his imitation, and Cal jumped in and said, that's not Nicholson, this is Nicholson, and then he did it, and they, and they gave Cal the line, he got the extra money, and I stood there going, please, please don't ask me to do impersonations, this is so out of my league. So I, I always just felt like I was, you know, I didn't belong in the room, but um, boy, was I proud of being a part of it. Oh, absolutely. And you were obviously one of the more iconic characters because Gambit's design was incredible and then your voice added a lot to what Gambit was. For, I, was like, I always wanted to play Gambit in the movies and uh, at, there was a time when I looked an awful lot like Gambit when I was younger. Gambit doesn't age. Um, <laughs> I do. So uh, back then uh, I, got, I was brought in to audition for the first X-Men movie and uh, it was for the role of Cyclops. And I thought, go, even before I went in, I thought, I don't, I don't want to play Cyclops. I don't want to wear that, that, those bad sunglasses. <laughs> and I, I want to play Gambit. I want to wait. And, and I kept waiting. And surely, surely Gambit's going to be the next one, the next one, the next one. Yeah. Never was. Yeah. So now I'm kind of proud that I'm the only Gambit. Obviously, X-Men concentrated so much on character and you guys every every single character had their moment had their episodes and that sort of thing was there a particular storyline that you you remember that being like oh I love this storyline for my character I suppose a particular arc where Gambit and Rogue really 
it had it began to get close enough that we were going to get to a, an end result. What's you know what was going to happen between two people who couldn't touch each other, and you know I I probably realized more as the years went on just how deep the animated series was on so many levels, and I think I was proud of the fact as well that. Um, the writers never insulted the audience's intelligence, which proves that there's value in not dumbing down your audience just because they're young people. Uh, I mean, the X-Men appealed to all ages, but as far as the youth went, there were a lot of young people connecting with it, going, finally, something is resonating with me, something is speaking to me and how I feel. I feel isolated, I feel insecure, I feel lonely, I just want to be loved. But I don't know how to reach out, I don't know how to use my electricity. And it makes me cry almost thinking about that. <laughs> um, I think that's, from the get-go, I understood that about the character. And um, I kind of carried that through. So, as shady as he may have seemed, or as tough, or carefree, or lonesome as he seemed. I think he, underneath it all, was trying to find a way to be loved and to love somebody else. Yeah. Don't we all? Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, like you said, the show did not dumb down for kids. And I think that's part of why it's so prevalent and so so loved throughout the community. Do you feel like that's exactly the reason why it's so relevant still? Well, I think, I think it is. I, but I, and I think it was one approach to um, to that type of audience, to the to the reception it got from the audience, you know, there's a representative here today from SpongeBob, and I would say the the Simpsons and Family Guy fall under these lines too. Their approach can be zany and comical and satirical, but the but underneath it, it's written by genius minds for other bright, somewhat genius minds. Yeah. And when your children say, stop, it's The Simpsons. I want to watch The Simpsons. I want to, in fact, that happened with Family Guy. I had other parents back when my kids were little, they would say, you let your kids watch Family Guy? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you let your kids watch The Simpsons? I said, yeah, if my kids get The Simpsons, I'm good with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be fine in this world. So, you know, clearly the X-Men wasn't a comedy, but, but there was humor in there. But yeah. the under, I think, I think that's important in all writing. It's not, you know, pandering and dumbing down your audience that for ratings or for. It's a cheap route to take, and it takes talented, bright, um, intellectual people to write that kind of material for that, for that clearly huge audience that's out there for that kind of material. And X Men, I think, touched on that. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree with. With all of those points, I think that X Men really like connected. was out there and connected to all of the people of that audience because it was about outcasts, about people who weren't for there weren't for were better human. terms. Yeah, who were human? Yeah, like, uh, everyone had flaws. Everyone has those things that and they everyone feel. Everyone has their own superpower. Yeah, exactly. In a way, somebody asked me what they, if I had a superpower, what it would be, and I said um, to be able to eat as much as I wanted of everything and <laughs> oh don't we all any time oh, and, I, all. and wouldn't that wouldn't that be helpful for the other x-men if i said don't worry about that giant pile of wieners over there <laughs> I'll, I'll cut us a tunnel in no time <laughs> you guys can do your thing quality yeah <laughs> Well, thank you so much for giving us the time. Really appreciate it. Is Gambit, Chris Potter, is there anything that you would want to promote that you're doing now uh, for the audience? No. No, there isn't. Just, I'm going to try my best to keep entertaining and be true to myself. And I just would hope that you audience listeners will do the same every day in your life and we'll all be good. I think yeah, I think you'll do a great job of that. I think you will. Uh, and thank you so much again for for coming and sitting with us at LA Comic Con. Cheers. <laughs>